Amen. And I would like to welcome you to what kind of Pokemon trainer are you? I am so happy to see so many of you here to share this conversation about Pokemon, Pokemon trainers, and to talk a little bit about you. So as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a discussion. I want to hear from you. So if you want to share your opinions, the best way to do that is to take turns. And to do that, because this is a long haul, first you're going to have to talk loud from the back. An organ spokesperson that talks loud for you. Does anyone uh, volunteer to help those who are quiet? A couple oh, loud mouths if you're quiet. Pick a friend to sit by them. <laughs> Also, I will be calling on you, so if you have something like a prop or a plushie, something that won't hurt someone, and you raise it up, that way I can call on you by your prop, it's easier. I see like a red hat, that's great, there's a keyblade, there's a, a giant sword, We've got some Pokemon, great. So if you want to talk, that'll be an easy way for me to identify you. With that, we're going to get started by talking about ground rules. So, first rule is that we're all here to have fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no teasing, no bullying, ever. Doesn't matter if it's here or anywhere, right? Yeah. Yep. We're all going to have a conversation, we're going to take turns, and we're going to respect each other. Are there any other rules that you want to have before we start this conversation? In the blue shirt, was that? Do you have a rule? No speaking out loud. No speaking out loud or out of turn? <laughs> no speaking out of turn. Okay, anything else? Okay. So I talked to a lot of you before we got started. This is going to talk about a lot of different things. We've only got 45 minutes, so again, we're not going to get through everything, I'm sure, but we're going to have a lot of fun together, and this is what we're going to go over today. So, the five W's of introspection. Does anyone know what introspection means? What is introspection? Yes. <laughs> introspection is a reflection, looking inwards at yourself and examining your own thoughts and choices. That's what this panel is all about, thinking about you. What kind of trainer are you? What kind of Pokemon do you like? So this is going to be thinking about yourself and what kind of trainer you are. We're going to talk about your ultimate team, your six top Pokemon. No substitutes. You can't go to the computer. What are your top six? So some of you can share those stories. Also, how you experience the world and how that compares to how you experience playing Pokemon. And then if we have time, we'll talk about your personality as well. I want questions to happen throughout. So again, raise those props if you've got a question, and I will call on you in turn. First question. Are you ready? When did you start playing? <laughs> all right, all right. So I'm going to do it in turn. So who is Gen 1, original Gen? Oh my goodness. Hold on, can I take a picture of you guys? Here we go, ready? Oh, you guys are great. Gen 1, the original. Now, does that make you any better? Who no. said yes? <laughs> no. You may have more memories and more experience, but whenever you started playing, that's okay. Alright, Gen 2. We got Ho Ho, Lugia, and the dogs. Anyone Gen 2? Okay, a few. Yep, when did you start? First game. Okay? Gen 3. Okay. Gen 4. In the bed! Yes. Good job. And five. Black and white. Okay, great. Gen six. Good job, guys. Raise those hands. All right. Seven. Sun and moon. And who hasn't started playing yet? Come on. Okay. <laughs> Who's here supporting people that play Pokemon and don't know much about Pokemon at all? Alright, thank you for coming! <laughs> so as you can tell, we've got a very diverse group of people that have had 
different experiences that all share the same interest in Pokemon. In the real world, we have the same kind of thing, and it's based on, I hate to say it, age. No. How old you are. So, if you look at the generations, you start with the old baby boomers that were born in the 40s and 50s and 60s, and you've got Gen X, and Gen X is where we tend to say the beginning of Pokemon started. So the people that were born between the 60s and 80s were some of the first that could have played the original games. As you go through, how many of you have heard the term millennial? Okay, probably most of you. Good. <coughs> Millennials have a large stretch, but that was the, the key time that a lot of people got started. Some will say that having something similar across the generations is what ties it all together. And then we've got the younger Gen Z or Gen Z. Who likes Gen Z better than Gen Z? Let's, let's get that going, guys. <laughs> so we have different starters. We have different Pokemon that we've played with. And we have different thoughts. If you compare this to the way in the real world, if you don't think about Pokemon, it's you have the differences in ages, but nothing to tie them together. So one of the great things about Pokemon is that it ties together anyone from any age. You can have somebody who's 40 years old, and you can have someone who's four, and they can have a discussion about Pokemon. <laughs> okay, Charizard. I've heard many people here like Charizard. Okay, you have something in common. And that's the best part about Pokemon. No matter where you started, you can have a lot of different different experiences. And you can also play games that are not listed here, such as one of my favorites. <laughs> Pokemon Snap, which kind of you can do a little bit now in Pokemon Go, the app. It's cool, but it's just not the same because you don't have a little printer that you gotta go to Blockbuster and get the pictures. Oh, you're right around. So as you see, we've got these shared experiences. So I'm going to talk about something really exciting, actually. You ready? <laughs> sword and shield. I want to see right now, how many of you decided you're going to buy sword? <laughs> okay, how many of you are going to buy shield? <laughs> And how many of you don't care? Thank <laughs> you for still being here, guys. You haven't left yet. I want you to. So why is it that all of a sudden we barely know anything about this game besides the fact that it's in some Scottish Highlands? <laughs> Which is going to be amazing. But you automatically start to gravitate to choose something. Pokemon is all about choice. Choosing whether you want to be a sword. Maybe that means a fighter. Or shield, which could be defense. Or think about the original games, red or blue. The same thing is happening all over again. Inviting a new generation of people to share with that experience that we all have had. Why is it that some of us choose automatically? And does anyone want to share a reason why you have chosen sword or shield? Okay, we got, uh, I saw there's a hand in the middle there first. Yep, you. Uh, it depends on what my wife picks first. <laughs> because of your wife? Yeah. She okay. picks sword, so I pick shield. <laughs> uh, I just want to catch them all. He just wants to catch them all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, over here the map. So every single time I play a Pokemon game, I always pick the second. So if it's red or blue, I pick blue. Gold, silver, I play silver. Ruby, sapphire, I play sapphire. I'm just keeping up with the trend. You just like to pick the second one. I do. Thank you for sharing. That's great. Over here, phone. ultimate legendary top tier Pokemon of that game. Yeah, okay. And there's like a mermaid in the back, yeah? Say that again? Swords are cool. Swords are cool. Our shield's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> you guys Front row, yes. Mm. 
can't, will we find an original Mew too? I think they're, I think they're very rare and you are very lucky. Thank you for sharing. Uh, there are some masks over here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I kind of, um, you know, I like to sort of find the one that, that feels suits me the best. You know, okay. I, just, I kind of really like the idea like of, uh, of protection and of protecting people. So I wear a shield versus any supposed to be sword. So I, I, that's why I think. So you chose shield because it's something that represents you, protection. Yeah. Now, I will not have you answer this, but think about, so why is it that protection means so much to you? And that's where the introspection starts to happen. When you sit back and you go, I look at this whole panel and I'm like, why? Why am I, huh? And by the way, this is all going to go up on YouTube, so if you want, again, my name, Riftwing Designs, R-I-F-T-W-I-N-G, you can find the video online, and it'll be listed as what kind of Pokemon trainer are you. So thank you for sharing. We'll take two more comments. Wade, back over there. My name literally means sword, so I'm oh. sword. Her name means sword, guys. She's <laughs> stuck. Oh, yeah. And water bottle in the very back. Less violence? No, I heard that like less popular. Oh, less popular. Like the stars, one of the three stars, like the stars, and I know the one that nobody likes. What did you just say? Freak out about starters. <laughs> one way that you would go. Your type helps you to get further faster. 
And especially if you choose fire because you start in grass and again that type advantage. Some people would say that is good in the beginning, but because the gyms are so hard, there's advantages and disadvantages. Yes? But if you start out with grass and you kind of grass type, do you think that grass type is stronger against the water? Yes, grass type would be stronger against the water. So you have these choices to make. Do you even, no, this is just hypothetical, but do you care about type advantages personally? I know some of you do, some of you don't. That's how you play it. That's one thing to consider. <laughs> Another thing that we've mentioned before, childhood idols. People that love Charizard, and then it's such a cool final evolution, might just pick it because of that final evolution. And we talked about grass. When I was at this first panel, they said it's tied to nature. It's also the most huggable, quote unquote. <laughs> Okay, one's made of fire, <laughs> one's a turtle, and then you've got your Bulbasaur, who's pretty squishy and has a beautiful flower. <laughs> also, grass, if you want to catch them all, anyone? Who's number one in the Pokédex? Victini! Oh, so some people wanted to start with number one. We choose a lot of different things. Also, animal similarity, so real life animals, salamanders, turtles, dinosaurs, tanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We choose it because of what it looks like. Who picks them because they're cute? Okay. There's actually quite a few of you. They're types and they're ultimate forms. And of course, we talked about ultimate forms. Okay? <laughs> One more time if any of you wanted a picture of it. I've also got the, uh, the link down at the bottom. Cornelis was the artist on this. We don't know what they're going to be. But the discussion that we're having here is why do we choose these? So why do we pick a certain type or a certain side or a certain thing that we do? Yes? So we can see which Pokemon suits us. Perfect. That's a great answer. So we can see what Pokemon suit us. Did you have a comment here? Um, me. Me? Oh, never mind. Okay. We'll get back later. How about color? We talked about this. Red, green, blue. So I'm going to play a really funny game with you guys. Are you ready? Yes. 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 No. I want you to pick a color and now think of a tool. How many of you chose this? <gasps> a red hammer. I know. <laughs> so why is it that we have these affinities to certain colors? Red hammer. There have been some psychology studies saying that oh maybe it's chosen more often just because red and blue are very common common colors, and tools like hammers are more common than Spanish. Okay. And the, so the brain makes these shortcuts. It's called a bias or a schema. And then your mind makes these associations. Blue is cold, red is hot. And your brain is programmed to make these shortcuts. So sometimes you go and you choose a thing because it reminds you of something else, an association. So you're thinking about the facts. You're trying to figure out what's happening. You make these ideas and also you think about what you've played before for those of you that have played different games. And we mentioned cuteness. <laughs> so I have gone through many things that I've heard from others. And I want to know, again, other reasons why you may choose a certain starter. Anyone else want to share? Again, raise those props up high. OK, we saw the peek again in the back. Um, strategy. Strategy, yeah. OK. Animal relevance. Animal relevance, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good. I see a hand over there. <laughs> Water ones? The coolest. For you. Okay. Yes? The personality. Personality. Yep. Good. Okay. The most powerful? The most powerful. Very good. Okay. Over here. Which one seems like it's going to suit me? How I feel personally about me. How he feels personally about each Pokemon. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. 
Habit. If you always pick one type or habit. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the versatility of them. Versatility. Could you expand? Like, you know, you'll need someone to like cut. Cut. Oh, agents. Agents. Oh, yeah. Wait, we have cuts or flies. Yes. Splash for caves. Yes. So you don't have to catch all those ducks first. Okay. In the red. The memes associated with that time. The memes. He said the memes associated with certain ones. Yes, I have heard that before. You are not the first. And behind you? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, because maybe you like attack more, so you want to take them with like high attack or like different stats. Different stats, how they act? <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing. Uh, was there one more in the back? No? Okay. Now, I have to ask you the question. Who's right? No one. You guys all said that together. Good job. So one of the questions I got when I was walking around earlier was, is there a right type of Pokemon to choose? And there is not a right type to choose. But you are always going to be right for yourself. Deep, right? <laughs> Save that one for later, guys. Okay. Now, regions. We've got a lot of different places. I have heard that perhaps the new game will be in the Kalos region. Do you have a favorite region? Is it based off of the actual land, right? So we talk about Alola. And the fact that in Alola, they have very different volcanoes, they've got different lands, absolutely. I saw a raised hand. Yes. Uh, is he calling? Is, I, I don't know. I like the. Um, it has the best dragons. Cohen? Yeah. Best dragons. Okay. In the very back? Uh, I personally like Johto because they yeah, added yeah. a lot of like Pokemon history to the games and really added Johto. So whenever Johto came around, it was like Johto. <laughs> and that was yeah. Johto added a lot of Pokemon history. Thank you. Yeah. Over here. So the game when you learn how to actually really play and become a Pokemon master. I'll say you're a master. <laughs> yes. I'll say Sinnoh as well, and wait for our remakes, but I like Sinnoh because it kind of introduced the three legendary Pokemon. So Sinnoh because it introduced the legendary Pokemon, and it was also the region that you had the most familiarity with. Yeah, okay. And, oh yes, the mask up there. All right, thank you. Um, well, I always really enjoyed um, Kanto, you know, that's personally, because, um, you know, I always felt like um, a, a sense of mystery, and it's very alluring, you know, always are going on an adventure, you know, always really takes you back. It takes you back, there's mystery in Kanto, that's Cool place for you. Love it. Yes. Right. Um, I would say Sinnoh because it has the best and both the normal starter. Hip Hiplop? Because yes. you that, that's your favorite starter and therefore it's your favorite region. I love it. Okay. We're gonna do you and then you. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Because it has like its own generation. Set up with a whole all brand new brand new. So it's new Pokemon, more diverse, lots of fun. In the back here. Yes? Okay, and up here. Right. 
lots of different things to do. And he mentioned us something interesting. So the fact that Pokemon have roles, right? So that it doesn't have to be about fighting or playing in the game. You've got police Pokemon. You've got Pokemon that are companions that are in the beauty show, right? And so one of the questions was, if you had a Pokemon, would it do certain tasks for you instead? Yeah. There's a comment in the middle. Yeah. Um, in the blue shirt, yeah. My favorite is Kalos because like Norris has like Kyle going brown and fighting. This is like the volcano of the sea. So Kalos? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. All right. Now, we've talked about your favorite region, and I wanted to quickly tie this into hometown pride. This concept that comes from South Asian communities where your idea of home, where you started, what your favorite region is, it's who you are. As we've talked about already in the panel, your favorite Pokemon, your memories, help to make you the trainer that you are. So nobody has a wrong Pokemon. Nobody has a wrong way of playing, and you should be proud of where you started and always open to meeting people that have different experiences. Any questions or comments on that? Okay. Now the fun part. Well, I guess we've really been having fun, but <laughs> we've talked about why you choose your starters, why you play certain games. Now we're going to talk about what you like to do. So, who likes to collect badges? Okay, second one, Pokemon breeding. Okay, catching the hardest, rarest Pokemon. Yeah, training the strongest rat. <laughs> and Pokemon dress up. Fashion, okay, a few. There are literally hundreds of different things that you could do in Pokemon. This part talks about why do you like playing the way you like playing? What do you like to do? Do you like to do breeding? Do you like to get really high level? Do you like to battle others? Do you just like to do gym battles? Do you like to catch shinies? Yes. Shinies are very interesting because there are over 800 normal Pokemon, and now we have these rare varieties. Even harder to find. How does that make you feel when you catch a shiny? So accomplished, yes. The feeling of being rewarded. So this ties into psychology. The idea that getting something done makes you feel good is part of the base quote unquote animal instincts that we all have as humans because of the chemicals that are in our brains. These rewards boost a chemical called dopamine, which you may have heard of before. So that's a feel good chemical. And in your brain, when you catch a shiny, when you beat a gym leader, when you beat a game, those chemicals make you feel this reward. It's the same reward you get outside of gaming. If you make a good meal, if you win a race, if you pass a test, those are the same things. So when you're beating other Pokemon, when you're catching them all, when you know how to discover a new region, that actually leads to you feeling good, which in turn makes you want to do it more. I hate to say it, guys. Pokemon is kind of addicting. It's a good drug, though. <laughs> The idea is that you want to catch more, you want to do well, and that helps you to have more fun. Yes? Okay, so you know how, like, your rock test score was orange, and the shiny version is blue. Mm -hmm. They rated, it made Lycanroc Tide Pod. Lycanroc Tide Pod is the breeding of shiny and dust form Lycan. Yes. I like this idea. But that's another question. And then you get, like, fan art, right? That's pretty and fun. If you were to create a new Pokemon, adding it to the 801 and make it shine, what would it be? That's a good question. We're not going to talk about that now. Did you have a question? Oh, I, it was one for him. 
How would they, how would that Pokemon taste? <laughs> how would you eat a Pokemon wolf in the first place? I like see one Tide Pod. That's when you talk about Pokemon snacks. <laughs> Which is interesting that you bring that up. One of the things that people like to do when they play is to make those Pokemon trees, right? Yes. Pokemon connoisseur, anyone? <laughs> come on, come on. How many of you watch the cartoon? Okay. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so you guys might have gone down to the dealer's den, the vendor exhibitor hall. You may like to also collect. Let me see that merch. Who's, who's got merch? Hold it up. Let me see your Pokemon. Let me see. Give you some Pikachus. Yeah, Detective Pikachu. Togepi in the back. Got the hats going on. Oh, look at these up here. Fantastic. Oh, and a name. Good job. So collecting. Adventure. Finding that new region, as you brought up earlier. Oh, I love the adventure. Who wants to be the very best? Like no one ever was. Randomize. The first Pokemon in each region, and 
if uh, you lose that Pokemon, it dies. You can't use it. If, if you lose that Pokemon, they're gone. It, and you have to release it. If they, it, oh my gosh, if they pass out, you, you lose them. Wow. That was so much <laughs> scary. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, I can't hear. Please be quiet. You've been wonder training us lot, so you have to wonder train every time you have. Yes. Wonder trade in Nuzlocks where you have to catch something, then trade it, then play with what you get. Oh. Does anyone want to try these now? Yeah! It's a nightmare. That's what I think. Okay. Thank you for sharing, everyone. This is great. Friendship. <laughs> Who likes to play with other people that also play Pokemon? In real life. Yeah. You know, the Switch has a good way of doing that as well, because you have to try and catch things in Pokemon Go that match with that. Trading. Very fun. And battles as well as friendship, right? Yeah. Competitive. But always trying to be better than you were before. I had a question before I started. How do you deal with losing? So whether you lose a battle against a friend or you lose a battle against the gym, you need to learn from the battle why did you lose? Think about it. You know, you're allowed to feel bad. You're allowed to play, put the game down, walk away. But then at some point, go back and think about why. Was it the tights? Should I have used a potion? Did they use a potion too? Why is it, and how can you grow? And maybe it really was just they had a better time than you. And always respecting that your opponent's trying to win too. Nobody wants to lose, I don't think. No. No. So remember that everyone needs to have a turn at being successful. All right. So with battles and cosplay, right? I've seen some good costumes. And we mentioned types. And what about crossovers, right? So this is obviously Sonic Universe creeping in. What about Digimon? No. Oh, appearance of battles. No. All right, so we have five more minutes left, and I want to hear from you for the last portion. So we've talked about why you're choosing a certain type, why you're choosing a certain game, what regions you like, and why you like to play the game. So my last question is going to be, your ultimate six Pokemon team. Now, I can't let you all say all six, but right now, in your heads, think about, is there a theme? For me, these are mine. They're mostly cute insects and mushrooms <laughs> and dragons. For me, it's cute. It's, and it's also, as was mentioned earlier, I have the ability to fly, I have the ability to cut, I have dig, so I'm trying to get at least enough that I can surf through most of the game uh, without uh, switching. Uh, 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 you like that? Okay. If you have a theme that you would like to share, raise your hand and I'm gonna start to go around the room, okay? So your theme. My theme is to just pick what's useful and what you're going to need. Thinking ahead. What you need in the future, okay? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Evolutions? Yeah. Good. Um, I think like skill types and just yeah. Steel types. Yeah. Okay, great. Over here. My theme is based on my favorites from the original one. So fire, psychic, dragon. Fire, psychic, dragon, all the breaks from the original. Yes, over here. I I would say um grass fighting types and and um, ghost types, because they're all the best. <laughs> Grass fighting and ghost types, and in your opinion, you think they're the best. Okay, we're going to go to the very back. We've got, a, is it an Umbreon in the back? Yes, what? The best thing I've noticed is dark and fire types. Dark and fire, thank you. Okay, in the blue. <laughs> Sometimes I do just what Pokemon and make it cool, and sometimes I do like just legendary Pokemon, and then sometimes I just do the Pokemon I like stalking in. So the ones you start with, the ones you like, and sometimes legendaries. Yeah. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, is that a meow? I can't tell. Okay, not a meow. <laughs> but please, the, that plushie, yes. I would make a rainbow. A rainbow? A rainbow. Okay. And then, yeah. Strategic for battles. Okay, thank you for sharing. Yes. Scary looking Pokemon. Scary? Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yes. Uh, a lot of the ones that I like are just like strong and physical, and so I don't know why. It's just really straightforward. Strong and physical. Now you take that home and you start to think, why? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Over here. It's not like Synergy with using sunlight. How cool is that? Yeah, it just happened. Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> so now you go home and you think, why? Why did it happen? Is it? Is it just something that I relate to? Is it because it looks pretty? Is it because it's powerful? Yes, Doctor Who has. Some um, Pokemon that I like and or uh, uh, ones with good attacks and good counters. Attacks and counters and ones that you like. Thank you. Yes, next hat. Uh, dark, flying, and dragon. Dark, flying, and dragon. Okay, thank you. Yeah, over here. Uh, the ones I love the most, and also recreated Guzmas team. A Guzmas team? Yeah, Guzmas team. It's like the Gotcha. Okay, yes. Six of the same. Six of the same. <laughs> Dark Pokemon. Thank you. Okay, and then behind you in the red? I would say dragons, goblins, and inanimate objects. <laughs> dragons and inanimate objects, I like that. Yep, there are a lot of inanimate objects now. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes? Team composition. Team composition, good. Okay, we're going to do three more. I saw one, two, and three. Okay, so one. DXs and DXs. The DXs? The oxes. The oxes? You, you said EX and EX card game? Oh, the EX. Uh, the, the EX, gotcha. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, good, it's hard to hear. Over here, there's number two and then three. Two. Yep. Um, I like those ones that are useful against the gym. Also, also they're ones I've played up for a while, so I can have like, an emotional connection with them. Mm -hmm. And like I feel like connected to the Pokemon I'm using. So good against the gym, useful. Oh, and elite four, I should say. Elite four. Yeah. And that you have a connection. Yeah. I like that. Okay, and the last one was over here. Go for it. Oh, thanks. Um, so I think um, like I am building the ultimate team. I kind of I can try and get like um most magic you know, like find like that are good like unconventional ways, like I guess if they can't really do the things in the game, they can't really do the time. You have like unique ability like in the game, like Pokemon, which you can have items or sell peels, or you can't get the status position, you can't get to hit it normally. Like that, that, that's what I think is cool. You transform into another one. So growing as you're playing the game and trying different things. Yeah. I love it. Thank you all for sharing. Unfortunately, guys, I told you to go fast. We are through, so I have to ask you now again. <laughs> Is there a best way to play? There's a best way for you, but it's not the best for everyone. So I encourage you, even though my time is over, you guys can still hang out and tell each other your stories. I know you guys have a lot of good conversations. So with that, again, I want to thank you. Please take a picture of this. I'm at Riftwing Designs on everything, all social media, and I thank you so much for attending. Have fun, guys, and thank you.